President of the United States of America. Political songs have been part of the democratic process in America since almost the birth of the democracy. For a candidate to sort of hitch his or her wagon to a certain song, it's an extraordinary opportunity to kind of get into voters' lives. You're singing it as you're cooking dinner. You're singing it as you're giving your kid a bath. Politicians realized they could harness that as a way of sort of bringing voters over to their side. Around the Revolutionary War, soldiers used to sing God Save Great Washington to the tune of God Save the King. God save They really got going in earnest around 1840, which is when some laws that were restricting voting in America to landowners were repealed. You had all of these people who'd be going to the polls for the first time. Someone figured out that a good way to kind of get a message to those people was to have a catchy campaign song. His nickname was Tippecanoe because he had been a bit of a hero in the battle at Tippecanoe. And then they kind of tossed on Tyler too, which was his running mate. Early campaign songs were catchy in many ways because they deployed very similar strategies to what a contemporary pop singer might use. So ideas of repetition, the resolution of a chorus, a kind of melody that feels familiar. It's kind of the same mechanics that make a Britney Spears song work. Campaign songs have evolved, much like advertising has evolved. Now it's much less likely that we will hear an original jingle in a commercial. Instead, you're going to hear a pop song. So I think a really strong example of this was Bill Clinton when he picked Fleetwood Mac's Don't Stop. a sort of direct line to boomer voters who he was courting with vigor uh, in terms of saying, look, I'm just like you. Remember the song? The lyrics of the song and the message of the song were really consonant with Clinton's message, some new tomorrow that's better than today. So for 2020, Joe Biden is using Bruce Springsteen's We Take Care of Our Own. The song has this very trenchant kind of rumbling chorus, which contains the lyric. Which in some ways is, you know, a beautiful idea, but I think in other ways is a kind of problematic idea for a moment in which this question of our own, sort of who deserves our care and respect, is really kind of central uh, in many voters' minds. Elizabeth Warren is using Dolly Parton's 9 to 5. Five was also briefly used by Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so many songs, guys. Uh, you know, why pick one that people might associate with a losing campaign? But of course, nine to five, it's about people taking control of their lives, demanding fair pay, equal pay, equal rights, all things that are clearly quite important to Elizabeth Warren as a candidate. Bernie Sanders is using John Lennon's Power to the People. It's a simple message about democracy itself. It does feel like a chant. One gets the sense that John Lennon, had he lived, maybe would have been a Bernie bro. I had high hopes for Mayor Pete. He's a classical pianist. High Hopes is a great pop song. It's really catchy, it's energetic, it feels youthful. He's one of the youngest candidates, and I think he's also one of the only candidates this year that picked a song that's popular right now. Kamala Harris is using Mary J. Blige's Work That. I think it works on both levels uh, in terms of kind of instantly sort of rousing and exciting a group of people 
And also, it seems clear to me that the song itself means something to Kamala Harris. We can see it kind of mirroring with Kamala Harris, and she's kind of a tough woman, she's intimidating, and she's not apologetic about it. I think the American public has seen quite well that you are biased in this situation. I think it's an inspired choice, not necessarily a predictable or obvious choice. When we see politicians not necessarily paying careful enough attention to the lyrics, that's where we see candidates begin to run into some embarrassing trouble. You can't always get what you want. It's you can't always get what you want. It's right there. Mick Jagger sings it a million times. Both Beto O'Rourke and Bill de Blasio are using songs by The Clash. Oh God, this one breaks my heart. I'm such a big Clash fan. The Clash are my favorite band. The Clash were not a band that believed very strongly in the goodwill of government. For someone who is running to be a public servant, to use a song that contains the line, is extraordinarily weird. And then Tim Ryan is using Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. But another song where you think, couldn't someone have just taken a few minutes to Google the lyrics to this song? My life is a movie, but in I don't want any presidential candidate to be expressing that idea. Yikes. <laughs> you know, fucking yikes. 